Hey there, this is Daryl also from the Jackson Fishing Team. I'm going to be uh, tying our fifth saltwater fly for the series, and it's uh, Byron McGowan. He's a captain out of Jacksonville, Florida, and it's called the Black Phone. And it's uh, kind of designed to uh, target uh, black drum. But, you know, I don't see why a redfish will take it. I mean, they're part of the drum family. But, uh, anyway, uh, I'll, we'll take a look at it, and uh, I'll explain the materials as we go along. And, uh, yeah, and so we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, this is my interpretation of uh, Captain McGowan's... Uh, black bone crab pattern um, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get on with it. It's kind of unique according to the bill of materials the, the crab eyes or the shrimp eyes there are uh, supposed to be used as uh, weed guards, but I don't know, but anyway, I'm kind of up in the air about that right now, but it might change my mind after I, I fly, use this, use this on my trip, or maybe here locally. All right, why don't we go ahead and get started and uh, in time. The hook we're going to use is a uh, Gamagatsu B10S, a one knot, and of course, I'm going to go ahead and debarb. And the thread I'm going to use is going to be uh, some 210 denier in black. And instead of starting at the eye of the hook, we're going to start just, just above where the barb is. We'll tie in our tail, which consists of uh, rubber legs. We're gonna we're using centipede legs, sparkle hot pink in medium, kind of like what they look like, except for the feather. And uh, we're gonna put two in there and fold it over, so it'll give us like four legs for the tail. I'm going to stretch it a little bit to uh, tie it in. The next material we're going to use is a cross cut rabbit strip in fluorescent orange. It don't need not need don't need much of this. Only uh, roughly three turns. And the funny thing about cross cuts, you'll see that it's there. There is a grain or a pattern, 
So what we want to do is when we're tying it in for the the rabbit fur to go over the the bend of the hook in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trim some of this material off. sure I got it going the right way. No, it don't look like the right way. Let's see here. right. I don't know if you can see that or not, but when you're tying this fly you'll you'll notice how that lays down. And we're just going to put three wraps. So that's one, and you're seeing how it's laying down now. So that's the way you want it to lay down. And we'll lift it up here and kind of do a separation. Trim that, and then we'll put some thread wraps on top of it, and add some Zappa Gap or some super glue right here, so it makes it more durable. Take it up to the eye of the hook and then we're going to lay down a little bed for the, I'm going to use <coughs> some small lead eyes, you know, whatever color you want. I'm using a red with a black in there and I'm going to line it up like I do my for my clousers. And then we're going to tie that in right there because, I don't know, it just looks like a good place to do it. And then I'm going to kind of look down the nose of that. super glue to because this will probably bounce around on the oyster bed shells and
and helicopter around it. <coughs> Next, I'm going to take some black <coughs> slopping and trim off some of the Some of the fuzzy stuff, we want to leave some of that on there. <coughs> I need some water. Next, we're going to get you some uh, cactus chenille in uh, holographic black. Get rid of all that stuff off my desk. It's on there. And clean off part of it. So we just got the core. And we'll wrap this for the body. I suppose you could use Estaz if you don't have the cactus. And we're going to wrap around the eyes like a head. And we'll wrap this slopping. Try to fold this back. And we're going to give it like one full turn right back here at the rabbit fur. And then we'll spiral wrap it going forward. And snip off the dog and I kind of already did that when I put the paws on. Next we're going to do is we're going to put in our, our eyes. Using the uh, shrimp eyes. And 
then what I'm going to try to do to help keep them in there, I like to flatten these a little bit. And we'll position these up just so that the the eye part is just past. I'm going to pull up that way I'm not torquing those around. And then kind of lightly pull them forward, not too tight, so you don't pull them out. And put some wraps behind there. So that way they're maybe sticking up a little bit. and adjust them a little bit. And this is where I'm not sh quite certain about this. Grab, grab my little cutters here to trim them off. Divide them in half a little bit. Help bring them up. And we'll do a, a whip finish. them a little bit before I put my UV on there. Before I do that, to make them sit better on the bottom, the recipe calls for uh, trimming the, the back here or whatever you want to consider this while it's sitting on the bottom. And we'll put a little UV on there. 
let it soak in. If you use like the flow or thin, you know, it'll soak in a little bit easier into the into the threads. Get our UV torch here or light. There we go, the black bone. going to be an interesting fly to fish. Um, we'll see. I'm sure it'll even catch anything that speeding on the bottom, chasing crabs other than black drum, you know, or red drum. Maybe even uh, sheep's head. We'll see. Anyway, uh, that that's our fifth fly. Our sixth fly is going to be a little bit more complicated or it's going to actually involve spinning deer hair. So, uh, it might be a little longer video, but we will uh, see how we can we can get that going on there. All right, this is Daryl Olson. We're going to see on the water and catching those big black drums.